Hello everyone. Today I wanted to share with you my Robax palette. Um, this company has a lot of different round palettes that are either stationary or on a Lazy Susan. This particular one is on a Lazy Susan. And um, they have a bunch of different configurations and I'm gonna go through mine and then I'm gonna kinda tell you what some of the options are, but I'll put a link below to the business website and then you can take a look for yourself. All right, so I had seen this particular palette in a few different watercolor classes that I had uh, attended online and I decided to go ahead and take a look. <laughs> and uh, when I was trying to decide which one to get, I, I agonized a little bit because they do have quite a few options, but ultimately I settled on this one. And this is the swatch, uh, swatch page that I made based on every color that is in here. And the company provides a palette template, which is what I used. Um, and I kind of went old school <laughs> on this template. What I did was, uh, I mean, I could have just printed it onto watercolor paper. Um, I'm not sure my printer would do very well with watercolor paper in it. So what I did was I printed this template out and then I went over all of the little lines with pencil and then I turned it over and then uh, wrote with the pencil all over it to transfer the pencil lines onto this. And then what I did is I drew over the pencil lines with a fine liner permanent marker. So that, yes, is that probably more labor intensive than just printing this out on watercolor paper? Yes. <laughs> but I did it because I, I didn't know if I could do it the other way and I knew how to do this and it was just a little easier to go from there. So this was just printed off of the website and they have one of these for each and every one of the palettes they carry. So it's really quite convenient. And if you wanna just print it onto watercolor paper, feel free. <laughs> That's probably a lot easier. Um, I'm using a fairly thick cotton watercolor uh, paper. It's from, I think it's called B Paper and it was in a little booklet. Um, and so I did, based on the thickness, I didn't know if it would work in my printer and I didn't want to try and, and break it. So I'm going to put this aside um, and then I'm going to show you. So I still haven't removed, this is on a Lazy Susan. <laughs> so I still haven't removed this little sticker here. Press firmly in the center to close, apparently. Although I have not really been able to get it to close too firmly. This cover uh, can also operate as a palette. So you could put it off to the side and use that as a palette for all of your colors that you have in here, including that center spot, if I took the sticker out. So I'm gonna put that off to the side and I'll tell you how I filled these. You can see it's so large that it doesn't even fit in my camera space here. Um, and this is actually one of the smaller ones. Um, and this is obviously something that I would use only at home. This is my um, at home artist palette. And I'll show you what I have in here and how I'm using it. This piece, so you can see there's a little ridge here. You may not be able to see very well, but there is a ridge here. This piece is an insert that goes in here. Normally this, and this is all part of a set that they will give you that in this configuration. But if you don't get the set in this configuration, it would just have this outer ring of uh, wells. And then this, this whole area would be a mixing area. So instead I got the set that had more wells and then um, just a tiny little mixing area. But again, you can use the lid to the watercolor palette as a mixing area. It is plastic. I have not used it yet. So I don't know how, um, how stain resistant this plastic is. Uh, I'll probably do a follow-up video after I've actually used it and let you know how that works out. Um, and like I said, this is fairly a fairly recent setup, so I haven't had a chance to use it. And you may notice that I have not filled these wells up all the way. So why I did that, and, and so, okay, I should back up a, a minute. So each of these wells will hold quite a bit if you were to fill them all the way up. You can either fill them up with tubes or you can press in 
half pans, which will fit in here. I'm not going to take it out because it might, <laughs> might end up going everywhere, but uh, you can, you can either press half pans into these little wells or you can fill them. And they come with these little, oh, this one will come out. So this one is a little liner and they include these liners in the set. So I chose to use the liner instead of putting the color directly into the well. That way I can both mix things around if I wanted to and um, it's easier to clean with that in that configuration. Um, so the reason why I filled these only part way is so that I could get a brush in there. And <laughs> of course, I do not have a brush handy, but what I would do is I would put the brush in and you'll be able to not mess up the point of the brush because you can just put the brush up against the side of the color. I also like the fact that I could add a bit of water and then I would have a little bit of a uh, watered down version over here in this area. So I, and I can always put more paint in here if I find that I need it. <clears throat> so really what I did to fill them is I just put a little blob up against the side and then um, I did not push them to the side with a uh, palette knife, which I could also do. I've done that for some travel palettes to have the same angle so that you don't ruin the tips of your brushes. Um, but I did not do that with this one. I just put a little dot here and made sure it was in relatively the right angle. And then for the colors that I wanted to use these little half pans for, I just pushed them in there and did not use the the liners. So basically I have a big bag full of liners because they do give you some extra as well. And then what I did is I also took a label maker and labeled each and every one of these colors. Now this was way more um, annoying than I thought it would be because my label maker normally prints labels much bigger than this. So what I had to do was I had to get it to the smallest font and also have it appear on only half of the label. So um, this is basically the top half of the label here that I have cut down with scissors. So it was very, it was very labor intensive to create this palette. And so what I have in here is, so these are my three favorite uh, brands of watercolor. So you have three rows, three different brands. The one on the outside is Daniel Smith, which I obviously have the most of. Um, I do actually have a few more colors than what are represented here, but this is the majority of my collection of Daniel Smith watercolors. In the middle, I have Schmincke, which is, I would say, my second favorite brand of watercolor. And then in the center, I have Core Brand, which is my third favorite brand of watercolor. And that way I can use all of these together in my studio. So, um, and you could configure this any way you wanted. You could fill the whole thing with one brand. You could uh, fill it up with a bunch of different brands all over. Uh, I don't have these labeled by brand on here, but I know which row has which brand, so it's not really an issue for me. Um, but if I were to do individual brands, I would, for different colors, I would definitely have to figure out how to label that. So there we go, and it works What's really nice is you can just, you, you don't have to move around in the palette. You can let the palette move to you. So if I wanted to, I was over here using some yellows and then I wanted to move over to using some darker blues, I would just move it over and then those would be in front of me and I could use them really easily. So that's part of the reason why I got this because I wanted to have a more convenient palette that would not only contain the majority of the colors that I use the most, but would be very easy to use. And uh, really the only reason why I haven't used this much is even though uh, we're still in these strange times these days uh, and a lot of people have extra time, I actually have still been working quite a bit from home. So I haven't had as much free time as I would like. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping to have some time to deal with this soon. <laughs> Not to deal with it, to enjoy it, to enjoy this lovely palette. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this up. So this cover goes over there, firmly in center to close. And then I'll show you this really quickly. So basically what I did was I tried to uh, get similar colors in each brand. And so, uh, and they're not always lining up exactly, but uh, it's close enough for my taste. 
And so uh, basically if I want any particular color, they're all, they're all in the same area. So if I want yellows, they're all gonna be in this area. If I want reds, they're all gonna be in this area. And I was actually pleasantly surprised by how many um, similar tones to each color that I had in each brand, which, which made it really <laughs> nice. And some are so similar that I would actually somewhat wonder why do I have them in the same palette. Um, but they do have different uh, qualities for each of them. Like for example, so I don't have a Hansa Yellow in the Schmincke brand, but I do have a Hansa Yellow Light in Daniel Smith, and I have a Hansa Yellow Light in Core. But they're very different Hansa Yellow Lights. This one is a little more green, and then this one is a little more transparent, I would say. So they all have different qualities, even if there are the same colors in here. Um, and so, especially with things like neutral tint, I don't have a neutral tint in Core, but I have a neutral tint in both Daniel Smith and in um, Schmincke. And they're a little bit different. This one's a little more purple, this one's a little more gray. So it works out pretty well. I, I have yet to see how this will work in practice, but I will probably do a video of uh, playing with this palette in the future. All right, so that was all for today. Feel free to like and or subscribe, and I will see you next time. Have a great day. Thanks, bye.